Halogenation is a reaction between an alkene and a halogen molecule, which we're going to abbreviate as X2. The halogen molecule that is used in, in this reaction is typically the chlorine molecule or the bromine molecule, Cr Cl2 or Br2. In this reaction, we're going to add the halogen molecule to the carbon-carbon double bond, which will turn it into a single bond. We're going to add one halogen to each carbon of the alkene, and they add anti to each other, which is what I've represented here. So they add in opposite directions or on opposite sides of the double bond. Let's take a look at the mechanism for this reaction to see how it actually takes place. We're going to start with just a very simple symmetrical alkene, and let's react this with the Cl2 molecule. The carbon-carbon double bond reaches out and attacks either one of the chlorines and breaks the chlorine-chlorine bond. And this creates an intermediate. So initially that first halogen, whether it's a chlorine or bromine, it initially does not belong to either one of the carbons of the double bond. It's bonded simultaneously to both of them. This very weird intermediate, which we call the chloronium or the bromonium intermediate, positive formal charge on that halogen. Um, so it's not particularly stable. The intermediate, is then attacked by the chloride that's formed when the chlorine-chlorine bond breaks. So this guy right here will come in and it will attack either one of the carbon atoms of the alkene. When we have a symmetrical alkene like this one, it doesn't matter which one we draw, uh, which carbon is getting attacked. But when we have an asymmetrical alkene, then we will have to consider the possibility of that halogen attacking both of those carbons and all of the different products that could be formed by that attack. So when the chlorine comes in and does, it, does the attack on the chloronium uh, ion, it actually comes in underneath this triangle of the molecule, it comes in on the opposite side of the existing chlorine, trying to keep these electronegative atoms as far apart from each other as possible. When that chlorine, second chlorine comes in and attacks, it breaks the carbon-chlorine bond. And this gives us a product that looks like this. It's going to have this type of stereochemistry. The chloronium chlorine is staying, sticking in that same direction. And the new chlorine that we've brought in, which came in from the underside, is on the opposite side of what used to be the carbon-carbon double bond. So let's talk a little bit about the conditions of this reaction, and then let's look at a couple examples. First of all, we don't have anything like Markovnikov's rule for this reaction because we're adding two identical things to the double bond, so we don't have anything like that to talk about. Um, we do have the anti-addition of the chlorines or the bromines, which we've seen from the mechanism, and also... Because we don't form a carbocation anywhere in this reaction, there's no rearrangement. So this reaction is pretty simple when it comes to, you know, knowing that you're going to put one halogen on each carbon of the double bond. But it's actually pretty tricky when it comes to dealing with the stereochemistry. So let's take a look at two examples of this reaction and how you can draw the stereochemistry correctly every time without any sort of issue. And I am going to... We're going to draw the mechanism, so I'm going to draw out that Br2 molecule so that we can watch that bond break. And let's attack with the double bond and draw our intermediate, which will look like this. Now it's it's not going to matter if you draw the bromine bromonium triangle thing on this side of the molecule or over here on this side of the molecule because we're going to explore all possibilities of stereoisomers and uh, for the products of this reaction. So here is our bromonium. Now with our bromonium, we have also made the bromide ion when the bromine bromine bond broke. And that bromide ion is going to come in and attack 
either one of the two carbons of the carbon-carbon double bond. It doesn't have a preference for one over the other, which means that it can attack both of them. So we've got two possibilities. This is not a or, one or the other. This is an and situation. So we've got two, two possible attacks. There's our other scenario. And when those attacks take place, we get two different stereoisomers as the products of this reaction. So for the first one, when we break that um, carbon-bromine bond, the existing carbon-bromine bond, we want to make sure that we are drawing it, continuing to draw it, pointing in the same direction. And that new bromine that comes in, coming in underneath the molecule, we want that new bromine to be down here, like this. And then for our other possibility down here, let's start with our carbon skeleton, our existing, existing bromine. This is the bond, the carbon bromine bond that we're going to keep. So right there, make sure you're drawing it in the same direction. And the new carbon bromine bond, it's going to be down on the opposite side of the molecule. So there's your two products. Now, this is not, neither one of these products are actually showing stereochemistry appropriately. We have two chiral carbons in this molecule that were made in the course of this reaction, and we need to correctly show their stereochemistry. So let me show you again the trick that I prefer to use whenever I'm trying to not screw up stereochemistry in these types of reactions. I will go back to the original alkene. I will pick two things that are cis to each other, and I will just make those wedges. And again, it's not going to matter if you choose to make both of these wedges or both of them dashes, you just need to make them both the same. And I'm going to follow that stereochemistry through in this whole reaction. Like that. And same thing down here. Like that. Now you also pick for the other side of the molecule, the original alkene, make those guys dashes. And it's helpful to, for me at least to, to include the hydrogen in this case. So I'm now I'm also going to be adding that stereochemistry in. Just like that. When you're doing this, as I've done it, when you're up here in a place like this, make sure that you're always drawing your wedges and your dashes side by side. You should never be putting a, a straight line bond in between a wedge and a dash. So your straight line bonds should be side by side and your wedge and your dash should always be side by side. Uh, so these are the two products with correct stereochemistry that are made by this reaction. Let's try this second example here. Um, and for this one, let's just say we're going to jump straight to the products. We're not going to draw the mechanism of this reaction. So we have no change to our carbon skeleton. And we are going to be putting two chlorines, anti, on our double bond. And if we want to show the two possibilities of how these chlorines get attached, we're going to draw... You see how I've alternated this carbon. One product, it gets the up chlorine, and then on the other product, it gets the down chlorine and vice versa. Bond angles look pretty ugly over here, but that's okay. Now we've got to think about stereochemistry for this molecule. And before we get all crazy with wedges and dashes like we had to do up here, what we should do before we get all crazy about it is look at the two carbons that we worked on and ask ourselves, are they actually chiral? Because if either one of these carbons are achiral, we don't have to go through all of this process of figuring out the stereochemistry. This carbon right here has one, two, three, four unique things on it. So this carbon is chiral. This carbon down here has one, two, not chiral because it has two hydrogens on it. So this carbon is a chiral, which means it does not have any stereochemistry, which means we don't draw wedges or dashes for that guy at all, which actually makes this a whole lot easier. If only one of our carbons is chiral, that just means that we're going to make a pair of enantiomers 
one where the chlorine is on a wedge and one where the chlorine is on a dash, that's going to be the easiest way for us to represent the two products of this reaction.